Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. In this special edition, we're looking back at 2020, a year dominated by the coronavirus pandemic. We bring you expert insight on the true state of our climate. What the pandemic demonstrated us is that there is a hope, in a sense that if we need to take action, we are capable to take massive actions. So let's check the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. 2020 was the joint warmest year on record, together with 2016, with temperatures around the globe 0.6 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. 2020 also concludes what was the hottest decade on record, and you can see that in this graph. This shows decadal averages from different scientific institutions since 1851, and the warming in the last 40 years is obvious. Now, the coronavirus pandemic brought lockdowns all around Europe. Streets were suddenly empty and the air became cleaner. In fact, nitrogen dioxide pollution from vehicles dropped by up to 50% in some places. But those changes were not long-lasting. Richard Engelin from the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service explains why. If emissions go down, the concentrations go down. If emissions go back up, the concentrations go back up. This is basically because these pollutants have a short lifetime in the atmosphere. Um, they either um, fall down back to, to the Earth's surface through rainfall, for instance, or they react with other gases in the atmosphere. Uh, so their lifetime is limited. So air pollution in 2020 rose and fell as the lockdowns came and went. Meanwhile, carbon dioxide emissions dropped by 7% last year. But what impact did that really have on our climate? I went to speak to experts at the World Meteorological Organization to find out more. Here at the Botanical Garden of Geneva, I've come to meet CO2 emissions specialist Oksana Tarasova. She says the dip in emissions due to the pandemic is not significant in terms of climate change. The levels of CO2 in the atmosphere as well as the other key greenhouse gases like methane and nitrous oxide, they are all going up. So we haven't seen any decrease in the concentration. So if you look at the curve, it just goes up and up and up. And 2019 and 2020 is not an exception. It still goes up. CO2 causes the greenhouse effect, so-called because of the way the gas traps heat inside Earth's atmosphere, just as the glass retains heat in this tropical conservatory. There is a natural greenhouse effect which stays, which is with us, which was here before humans started doing any activities. And these are the human-induced greenhouse effect, which is related to our emissions. So when we meet additional CO2 or methane or nitrous oxide in the atmosphere, all those molecules which we add, they work as a small heating machines. Those small heating machines mean we're now on course to hit over one and a half degrees of global warming in the coming decades. Also, bear in mind that the climate system reacts very slowly, as the WMO's Max Dilley explains. It takes decades, really, for the climate system to catch up to what's in the atmosphere today. So the temperature pattern that we see globally is a product, really, of the greenhouse gas concentrations that we had in the atmosphere 30 years ago and therefore it's going to take another 30 years before the climate system starts to approach an equilibrium based on the concentrations that we have of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today. Human activity means carbon dioxide levels are now at over 410 parts per million, up from a pre-industrial average of 280 parts per million. The implications of that rise are profound. The last time that the Earth atmosphere saw this amount of CO2, was three to five million years back. And during that time, we had two to three degrees higher temperature and 10 to 20 meters higher sea level. But there were no humans. So that's the picture right now. If emissions can be brought down towards zero, then the situation will slowly change. You can read more about it on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.